Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. Salam to everyone that is uh, joining us via live. Jazakallah um, khairan. We really appreciate all of you guys coming out and listening in. My name is Sana Subhani, and I am the founder of Wasila Connections. Um, so I'm, you know, today what we're just going to talk about a little bit about Wasila Connections, sort of my story, the journey into Wasila and how we came about um, and what we're doing and what our hopes are, inshallah, for, you know, the future of Wasila and you all. So um, let's get started. So here I have up, you know, our website. Um, we are a nonprofit organization. We started in 2020, 2020, right before COVID. Um, so we, we were able to start right before COVID. Um, but before I, you know, before I kind of go into who Wasila is or what Wasila is, I, I want to tell you guys about me and so that you guys can go on this journey with me and I want to take you on the journey with Wasila so you can kind of get a feel and picture of how we came about to this, to today, really. Um, so my name, you know, as I mentioned, my name is Sana Subhani. I am a divorcee. I am a single mom of four daughters, um, and I am a clinical social worker. So mental health, personal experience, all in one. I got divorced in 2018. Um, and right before I had gotten divorced, you know, we subconsciously have this this idea in our mind that marriage is our is our end all be all that's what we were raised to be that we grow up we get married and that's it you have to stay married no matter what and towards the last year of my marriage i started having those thoughts of like this has to work this has to go i you know what's going to happen Who's going to say what? What are people going to say? I couldn't break free from this ideology that, that I'm going to be divorced. So, you know, throughout my journey of coming to that decision, there was a lot of heartache, a lot of, a lot of uh, difficulties, a lot of shackles in my mind that... I didn't think existed, you know, and I grew up here, you know, I grew up in California. And so I was someone who didn't care what people thought, wasn't really interested in how people viewed me or what I did. But this subconsciously was inside my mind and I had no idea until it came time to actually make that decision. And so, you know, I had, uh, I had a friend tell me, before you make this decision, make sure you are 200% sure that the decision that you are making is what you want. And that there isn't that you're going to look back and, and regret your decision. And so I thought about it. I thought about it. And I finally came to the realization that I did what I could. I, I did everything I could do. Therefore, this is, this is really the only option for me right now. And so I decided that the divorce was best. Um, and everything I feared about people, community, what would people say, how would it be afterwards, didn't actually come to be in a way. It didn't. It didn't go the way I thought it was going to go. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with, with a family that was supportive. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with a community that was supportive. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with friends that were supportive. And so thus began my journey of being a divorcee and a single mom. A, and a South Asian, a, a Desi Muslim. So as you can see, all the taboos all in one. So then I, you know, I started 
started working. I started, uh, I started working and I started just going about my life. And as people started finding out, I got commentary like, why didn't you stay in there for the sake of your kids? Your kids have a broken home now. You know, why, why couldn't you make it work? And just comments and questions that honestly were not appropriate. But alhamdulillah, you know, I was able to, to talk to people about that. And soon a lot of other people started coming up to me and talking about their stories and their journey. You know, I had a friend who came up to me and said they were raised by a single mother. I had many other single parents that I formed a relationship with that talked about some of the things that I necessarily didn't go through, but I understood. I had, I had friends tell me that, or the single parents say that we get shunned by the community. Everyone looks at us as where we don't belong. And, and they would talk about how their families were not willing to take them back. They would talk about their parents who just didn't want anything to do with them because they were divorced or that they were deciding to leave or that they were in an abusive marriage and they just, they just, they couldn't, they couldn't continue. Yet their families turned away from them. And a lot of the things I heard at that point was that if you're going to leave your marriage, you better come as a dead person. These are hurtful comments. A lot of the women that I was talking to, some of them attempted to commit suicide. Some of them had to raise their own children without their families around or without any support. Some of their friends of these women turned their backs on them. You know, and it was heartbreaking. I said, how can we, how can a community that once was their friend, their, how can a family that loved them, that married them off, that honored them, just dishonor them over, over a marital status. So a lot of, I was hearing a lot of that. And a friend came up and said, you have to do something about it. At that time, I, you know, I was working. I was, um, I was you know, working and trying to um, you know, grow, grow my career and, and figure out what, what could be best for the community at that time. And I, I, didn't, I didn't think too much about having this um, or even or even you know creating an organization by any means I then went to a and I, I kept I kept getting pushed and you know said hey let's let's do something let's do something and I said you know how we have so many organizations in the Bay Area we have so much I'm, I don't want to reinvent the wheel and then I went to a conference I went to a conference that in that conference um, Mufti Kamani was speaking and he said something so profound that I realized that we just do not have that anymore in our community. And that was that wherever the Prophet ﷺ went, he created a community. What does a community mean? Not just people living side by side, not knowing what's happening, but a community, a body of people that came together and helped one another in their most difficult time of need. Where was everybody? That was a solidification in my heart that I said, okay, that's what we don't have. That's what I'm going to create, inshallah. And thus, the journey of Wasila started. Now, I got together with a couple of people, and we, we talked about what is it that we can do for the Muslim community? How can we help the Muslim community? I mean, we, there's so much need in the community. You know, it's not, if it's one thing, it's another thing. And it's just all these things. It's like, well, what can, what is, what's going on in our community that no one has talked about? Nobody has touched. And lo and behold, the divorced community, the divorced, the separated, the widows, all of them were not in the spotlight. 
So we said, that's it. That's, that's what we're going to do. We are going to focus on that. What does that look like? So when we were coming up with, um, with the name Wasila, I just want to talk about what the definition of Wasila means. Wasila means a means of getting close to Allah. And uh, let me see. Just I and I want to I want to give sort of a quick definition linguistically, what what the meaning of wasila actually is. So, wasila was derived from the Quranic verse mentioned in um, Surah sort of Five, Ayah Thirty Five, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala commands us towards the fear of Allah and to seek a wasila, to gain closeness to Him and strive in the path of Allah if you wish to be successful. Wasila spelled with the scene is derived from the word wasila, which means to make effort to become close to someone. Relationships are important at wasila connections. And honoring the relationships that Allah SWT informed us to honor is of the utmost priority in the era of abuse and oppression. Interesting enough, wasila spelled with a sad refers to becoming close to someone in an absolute sense, whereas wasila with the scenes means to seek gain nearness with longing and love. So in essence, wasila connection strives to help build, rectify, maintain healthy relationships with others so that all of these become a wasila to, in building a relationship with our creator, our sustainer. And this commentary of Wasila was taken from Marif al Quran of Mufti Shafi Rahmallah. That, you know, what's amazing is that Wasila is also translated due to this verse as the act of seeking, you know, closeness, but we seek helping others as a means of ourselves gaining closeness. And so with Wasila, we're a means, we want to create more ease for those that have been forgotten or that those that have been neglected. And so that's, that's really what wasila means. And when I heard it, I said, that's it. That's what it is. We are going to be a means of ease to those that are going through a hardship time. We are going to be that collective community that strives to build such a movement that doesn't leave anyone behind and helps them through their difficult time. And what, and what saddens, me, saddens me is that, yes, the divorce and the separating the widows are often forgotten, unfortunately. Now, although our primary audience is for divorced and separated and widows, it's not, it's not just divorce. It's, we, wanna, we wanna look at this in a more holistic way. And when I say holistic, although our focal point is divorce, it goes beyond that. It goes before that where you're struggling in your marriages or you're struggling with something in your life. So the marital aspect. And then it goes even beyond before that, which is struggling before getting married. Maybe there's something happening there that you are struggling with. And then even before that, individually. What are you doing as an individual? How can we support? you as an individual because with all of these labels married divorced separated widow these are all labels we are not defined by labels therefore we want to move away from that definition and then even after that post divorce what can we do to help support after you've gone through it and then even after that and it goes deeper into how can we bring the community involved in it so just multiple layers is who we want to encompass. So that's really the essence of who we are as a wasila, how we came about. We, uh, you know, we have our nonprofit status, um, and uh, we went ahead and did some programming over the last two and a half years. And some of the programming that I have placed up here is we've done co-parenting um, series. I think it's very important that when you do get divorced, those that have kids that are single moms, single dads, that 
you now have to take a look at your relationship, not as a spouse, but as a partnership so that your children can thrive because children are also part of this. And they're often also neglected in this process. We've, have, we've had um, other events such as um, a, Ramadan, you know, a Ramadan event. We have iftars. We have a Eid, program, a Eid a gift basket program for our divorcees and separated and widows and their children. We started a clinical therapy practice we provide therapy virtually. Um, we also have a religious consultation model where you get access to ulama. I know sometimes it's really hard to reach out to the ulama. And, you know, and uh, mashallah subhanallah, our ulama, our ulama are trying to do their best and, and, and try to get to every. But we know, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes it does get hard to get back. But we have direct access to that. We have parent consultations. We have a board certified behavior analyst on our team that provides parental consultations because oftentimes as single parents, we, our children ask us questions or our children are behaving in a certain way that it's really hard to, to, to navigate because we ourselves are going, going through an emotional turmoil that we also have to take care of our young ones as well. So really that's there to support that process too. We've had community events. We've had socials. And these socials we've, in the past, we've done a social. We've had 200 women and children come out because really the idea behind Wasila is to create a collective community, create a movement that you find support with one another. You, you, have, you have support with each other because women, we need to, as women and men and women, everybody, we need to create a village. What does that village look like if we ourselves as women are not coming together for each other? So we have community events. We have premarital. Um, we have premarital workshops. I also we also do support groups for single moms and divorced women, and we also do support groups for divorced men. Yesterday we actually um, we actually had a event for the brothers who we did a brothers bonfire, and the topic was the manliest man, and we want to cultivate that that definition of. What does it mean to be a man through the Sunnah of the Prophet? What does it mean to be a real man in this day and age? So we recently had that, and then we also had um, a lot of other workshops. Um, you know, we have multiple workshops that we plan out throughout the year. Um, and uh, so, you know, in Ramadan, we have a worship with ease campaign that we do Ramadan at stars um, and one-on-one um, -on -one guidance support. Inshallah, we're going to be having that. Because I know a lot of the times when we're going through these situations, who do we go to? Who do we talk to? I know a lot of women tell me that it's really hard to talk to someone who hasn't gone through this. And I understand. I understand completely that when you reach out to someone, you feel like, do they really know what I feel? Do they really understand me? Can they really be there for me? That's a hard question to ask when you're, when you're needing that someone. I know a lot of women talk to me about feeling isolated. And that's what our community events are meant to do, is to break that isolation, is to recreate that, no, you don't need to go through this by yourself. No, you don't need to face people that have this idea that they want to shun you. No, that is not us. That is not our ummah. That is not what we are supposed to be here on earth for. Our Prophet ﷺ gave us the perfect role model, the perfect guide to how we should be with each other. And that is what Wasila Connections aims to be, is to make sure we build those connections and we come together and maintain those connections, no matter what difficulty we are going through. So, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to keep questions um, towards the end because we want to honor the space. Uh, we are, alhamdulillah, we are live streaming, and we want to give you guys the privacy and security. So we will, we will have Q&A at the end, inshallah, if that's okay. Um, and those that are live streaming, you know, those that are on our um, page, please, uh, you know, ask questions so that we can, you know, definitely get to that as well. Um, but this is essentially the heart of heart of us right now. Again, assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone.
Mashallah, what an what an honor to have all of you here. Um, I'm really just so moved by this beautiful space, and I want to credit my dear sister Sana for all of her work, all of her efforts, all of the time that she's put into this incredible organization, which I really am looking forward to even hearing more about in her closing uh, remarks. But really, may Allah reward you, Sana, for all the work that you're doing to bring um, all of us here together, and all of you as well. I know I've heard, mashallah, from some of you that you've come from as far as San Francisco, San Bruno, and I'm sure other places. And we will continue with the introductions. We will, inshallah. Um, I'm not going to talk too long. I just wanted to, again, um, show support because this this type of work is so necessary. For those who don't know, alhamdulillah, I'm part of the Bay Area community here at MCC. I offer uh, halakhas and classes regularly. I meet with sisters all the time. And it's actually the, the largest demographic that I work with. Um, for over 25 years, I've facilitated halakhas in the Bay Area and in Southern California. And I've always seen that this particular demographic, this group of sisters who are uh, have come out of um, a marriage and have suffered all of the inequities and the stigmas and all of the just the, the terrible things that we we know exist and we are inshallah going to do everything in our power to overcome that they come to those spaces looking for healing looking for uh, support looking for community as uh, Sister Sana spoke about but oftentimes they don't really feel like other people understand right their circumstances so that's why having um, an organization like Wasila dedicated solely to serving the needs of this demographic and also the, the needs of the children, for example, and other family, extended family members who are also support systems for uh, for sisters and brothers who are, who've come out of um, you know, divorce is so, so critical. So I just was so honored by the invitation to participate and really happy to have all of you here. Um, you know, as I mentioned, my work with women over 25 or so years ago, I you know began as an or a female organizer for some of the organizations here in the Bay Area, and that kind of turned into this role in the community that I didn't I'm not I wasn't certainly qualified for um, because um, I was young and I, I didn't really have any expertise. But I think because the the uh, stigma not just around divorce and the topic of divorce, but really mental health issues and any type of those types of issues is so common and prevalent we didn't have the amount of now like we do now right we have much Muslim therapists we have entire agencies we have so much more now so we've definitely built a lot of infrastructure over these 20 or so years but back then we didn't have that so I kind of ended up finding myself because I was visible in the community people could recognize me as someone who was volunteering and working um, I would you know be approached by sisters some I knew some I didn't know seeking advice you know, they were struggling in their marriages they were struggling with you know the the day-to-day -day, but also with the heavy questions like should I stay you know how can I get out what am I going to do what about my children so those types of questions and I was you know in my 20s I didn't like ha have a lot of life experience but I think the the ability or the role that I was able to to offer at that time was to be an empathic you know you know just listen and sometimes that's the best thing that we can offer right is to be there to, to look at someone um, you know even if we don't know every detail of their life but to have that heart connection which is mashallah what our dear sister was able to demonstrate for us like the hearts were just immediately opened right which is one of the amazing um, if you look at the research about women when women come together in healing spaces like this even without words exchanged our oxytocin levels go up, which is the feel-good hormone. All of our stress levels go down. We don't have to talk. We can just sit here in silence and smile at each other, and there will be healing. So imagine taking it to the next level where you actually look at someone and say, I see you. You may feel invisible, right, to everyone else. You may be hidden because, as Sana knows, as all of us know who have been down this road before, Oftentimes, you feel like you are hidden, right? People don't want to associate with you. They don't want to tell your story or you to tell your story. They want to silence you, right? So to come into a space where it's like you are center stage. We want to see you. We want to heal you. 
your needs matter to us and we want to try to find a way where we can support you and fulfill those uh, needs for you whatever we can do whatever we can and so alhamdulillah you know that at, at that point though as i said when i was on this path of my own um i wasn't uh, there weren't these types of services so i just kind of ended up having that role and then it kind of word started spreading and i ended up having this you know reputation as a counselor although i'm not and i always try to tell people i'm not a certified qualified counselor it's just you know adina nasiha so you know that's that's about where i start and end with counseling you know you can just be a sister to uh, someone uh, or a brother but <clears throat> What people didn't know is during that time of me supporting a lot of people with their relationships, um, not just marriage, home life, many things, but mainly marriage, was that I myself was going through a very difficult marriage. Um, and, you know, it was years of, of doing this work and kind of having a reputation, but at the same time simultaneously hiding my secret, right? My big secret, that my own home was was broken my own home was didn't feel like a home actually it was just a house right it didn't feel like a home it didn't feel like a you know something that i was was proud of or i was you know feeling safe in and so i kind of sought out community work as a way to cope with my own issues in my own private life you know it was for me doing dawah being um, you know in the service of the community learning alhamdulillah we had the opportunity to learn from some of the great teachers in the bay um, that was for me a way to cope with what I was struggling with in my own relationship. And one of the beautiful part, things that I will always look back at, and I am so filled with gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I look at that eight year period of, of hardship, because some of the most beautiful relationships I have with sisters came out of that. And in the last two years of my previous marriage, it was about two, a year and a half, two years. We did work like this, but not in this professional, established way. Uh, we would just get together as sisters who were divorced or thinking about divorce or struggling in their marriage. Um, in homes, we would just get together and facilitate conversations and listen to one another. And the healing that came from those circles, I know, I remember, it, I had testimonies right in front of me of sisters who were struggling with suicidal ideation, who had all of these really dark thoughts, but just weekly or monthly, however often we were meeting, knowing that they could come to a place and have non-judgment. Nobody's trying to judge. Nobody needs to, um, nobody's you know, expecting you to tell them anything. You share what you want, right? It's your story to tell however way you want to tell it, if you want to tell it, but there's no presumption, there's no prejudgment, which is unfortunately the case often, right? Where people hear of the divorce and immediately rush to assume that somehow there was a failing. And who does that land on most often than not, right? The women, right? It's, it's the woman who couldn't keep her husband happy. The woman who couldn't keep her home running, completely denying or neglecting the fact that it takes two people Subhanallah, to make a home, and if one is uh, not just you know neglecting, but in addition to that, abusing, let's still blame the woman. It's it's we we've got so much work to do, which is why again, this work that Mashallah Sana is doing is so essential, and we really as a community have to support it. And it starts right here. And the fact that you all came is just such an amazing, um, real you know great step towards what Inshallah. I know her vision. I've I've had beautiful conversations with her. She's a visionary, mashallah. And she, you know, there's people who talk. There's a lot of people who do a lot of talking. And I'm sure we know, you know, people who always have ideas, you know, like, oh, we, the masjid needs more of this. And the Muslim community <laughs> doesn't have enough of this. And there's always complainers and people who are just, you know, armchair, uh, you know, uh, spectators or, or activists, whatever they call them. But they're just sitting in their comfortable homes, willing to criticize everybody. And then there's doers. There's people who actually say, you know what? There's something that's needed, and uh, and and I need to get my hands into it. You know, I'm 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 willing to roll up my sleeves, and get in there and do the work. And mashallah, that's why again, you know, we have to support this organization because she's done so much of the legwork to. I mean, have you heard? I I've never heard of another organization that serves only 
sisters who've gone through divorce and brothers too, right? We have to reiterate that it's for for all. It's not one or the other, but it, predominantly it's serving uh, women and children, right? And so, mashallah, I've I've never heard of another organization that was established with that intention. I mean, it's a beautiful intention, and you know, I know from the work that I do with women. This is so needed. I had people reach out from all over the world asking if this was going to be live streamed because they know they don't have support groups like this in their own cities, in their own states, some in their own countries. So alhamdulillah, you know, we're here for that intention. We're here because we need to have these conversations openly. We, and this is how we destigmatize divorce. We don't need to hide it. To me, I think it's in, unbelievable that we live in a time where People will stigmatize divorcees especially and then completely overlook the fact that the Prophet himself, he, he divorced one of his wives, we know Hafsa, right? And he took her back. So was, what about when she was in that status of divorce, right? What, did her position or her value change whatsoever? No, he took her back. His own daughters, right, were divorced and he welcomed them back with compassion and mercy. So I always, my, my kind of question about anybody who has, who, who somehow, um, you know, perpetuates this notion that a divorce, you know, kind of brings people down a notch is like, really? Do you think that you are above the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You, you have no idea, you know, you're, you're, it's, it's just ignorance. And a lot of it comes from culture, but it's certainly not our deen. And the only way that we're going to be able to restore the honor that's given to all believers, regardless of their status. Because this doesn't, as someone said, these labels don't define us. None of these labels define us. And, you know, there's so many proofs. We can pull from, from the Sahabiyat. You know, there's uh, uh, Atiqa bin Zayd. She, she was, she's known as the, the wife of the martyrs. She married five times to Khulafa, to some of the greatest Sahaba. She was married, divorced, married, divorced, married, divorced. Did her estimation change in the community? No. The Khulafa were marrying her. So this is all, you know, ignorant conditioning that's come over centuries of cultural ideas being put on our community. And we as women have to undo that. And the only way we're going to do that is by telling our stories, by coming together, by not um, hiding behind, you know, not, not uh, as long as I've been speaking um, in the community, I've never hid the fact that I was previously married. I have no reason to hide that. And I know, unfortunately, sisters who ha feel kind of, you know, because they're afraid of the backlash or afraid of being, uh, you know, treated a little differently, they kind of hide it. And I'm like, no, that this is contributing to these stigmas. Why should we be ashamed? I have nothing to be ashamed about. Alhamdulillah wa shukur lillah. It's a phase of life that some people go through and some people don't. And that's all it is. And nobody should be defined by these things. And I think the only reason why we're, we're coming together in these spaces is not to emphasize the label, but it's to say we have been underserved in our community. And there's a lot of us that are struggling, especially those who are single and who are likely still in court cases and, and you know challenging I mean, having all of those legal fights still ongoing and then not having family support, having to go into community spaces and not feel like the programs have anything to offer to them. This is not, this is no longer tolerable, right? We can't let that continue. And so that's why, mashallah, having an organization that's already established, it's a 501c3, we can start to really grow this organization and, you know, call on people to, to support it so that we can provide those services, right? So that Mashallah Sana and her team can provide those services to the community and come together in these types of healing spaces that, again, restore the, the, the honor that you already have. You have honor before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have honor. You're believing women. Inshallah, all of you are, are, are you know, you're, you're counted amongst the group that the Prophet said said in the, from the beginning of his mission until the very last words of his last khutbah included as being the ones deserving protection. So you have to claim that. And that's why, alhamdulillah, uh, again, I'm just really excited for, the, for what's to come, you know, what, 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 the, what the future holds. And I really um, want so much for all of you who are watching, for everybody who is here and who 
uh, wants to, whether you're married, divorced, it doesn't matter. If you recognize that this demographic has been long, this conversation is long overdue, these services to, uh, are, are long overdue, and you recognize the importance of it, then inshallah we call on you to, you know, to, do, to support this work and to, um, to inshallah you know, follow Wasila, you know, and look into their socials, um, look at the work and the programming that they're offering for everybody for the community, and let's just start having these conversations. And you know, this was a this is kind of like a you know it's a meet and greet, it's like an introduction. But for those of you who are who came from far distances, it's going to get real and a little bit more intimate once we turn all this off, right? <laughs> so this is just for you know for everyone else to really uh, to to know about this incredible organization. And I'm going to pass the mic back to Sana because. You know, there's more uh, that she wants to share. And then, inshallah, we will do those introductions, okay? Promise, we're going to do those introductions. And maybe we'll have some chai and, and some other sweets along the way. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I just want to share this. Um, you know, there are some people that you meet that when you're sitting with them, and they just... They make you feel a certain type of way. Um, let me just put this on. I am not tech savvy. Um, you know, I had the pleasure of, I'm just going to share this really quickly because I think it is, um, I think it's important to, okay, well, I can't. All right. I'm going to start quickly sharing here. Um, so I'm going to share it really quickly. That how Allah SWT facilitates everything. I mean, I know the sister was talking about how from where you know she she you know was able to see us or, or come to this, right? I reached out to Hus uh, Husai a couple of years ago when I was starting this, and um, and you know I you know I wanted to reach out, and I want to collaborate. I you know I'm I'm all about this idea of. Let's hold hands together because we can do a lot more together than we can by ourselves. And alhamdulillah, you know, Allah's timing is the best. That was not the right time yet. So I continue to do my mission. I continue to, you know, create programs, do programs, reach out to people, talk to them. And then this year, I had the opportunity to help out another organization in an event earlier uh, this year in February. And and I saw Salah Husai there, and I, um, and we got we got to talking, and it was it was like my first like we had our we, we were able to connect, and then I had another opportunity. And we said, you know, yes, let's let's continue connecting. But of course, as life gets busy for all of us, you know, we're like, okay, let's let's do it, let's do it. You know, time goes by. Then I had another opportunity with the same organization to do another event, um, to help out with another event, and there I was able to again connect with. Uh, Husai. And then there was another event, and that I think that event and Rajal Hoda recently mm -hmm. solidified, and we're like, we need to sit down and talk. And subhanAllah, as I was sitting and talking with her, just her story moved me. Her, her mission moved me. And just what she's doing, what she's done, just, it, just everything about her just moved me. And I just said, Alhamdulillah. This was the perfect timing. This was the timing that we need to meet. So, you know, never, never underestimate Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's timing. We're we're creatures of impatience that we we want things to happen right now. You know, this this pain has to go away right now. This this so solution has to come right now. But if everything came right now with a with a you know a snap of a finger, how would we experience? How will we grow? How will we understand and break our own shackles? And, you know, SubhanAllah, I, I, I appreciate Osala Sai coming and, and supporting this. And, you know, inshallah, many more of you to come and support our work. So I just want to really quickly talk about how can you as an individual, how can you as a community um, be a part of this collective movement that Wasila is attempting to create? Uh, with the help of Allah and for the sake of Allah. You know, one, one aspect is the thought process, destigmatization. There is so much stigma around this. 
the tragedy is that recently, I don't know if many of you know, but as the death of Sister Sanya rocked the community, you know, yes, it was a murder, but the tragedy around it was that she had no support. It was the stigma, it was the labels, it was all of that that led her to be in the isolation. She documented it. And how many more women and men, how many, but how many more women are going through this day in, day out that you do not hear about it? You are not going to hear about it because they're not, they're not on social media. They're not documenting it. They're not doing it. They're, they're suffering silently. And that's why this event is called Breaking Bread and Stigma, Our Forgotten Sisters. Because there are so many out there that are continued to be forgotten. There are so many out there that are not on the limelight and don't ever come out in the limelight. So how can we know? How can we see? Well, what can we do with those hidden sisters? And this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to break that and bring them out. Because what she went through is not just only her that she went through. A lot of women go through this every day and day and out. I have many women that have come to me. I, I started a, we, when we first started Wasila, we did a sub, in-person support group out here in the Bay Area. Do you know how many women showed up? 30 women showed up. I myself was shocked. I, I expected 10 or 12. I said, you know, inshallah, maybe there's more. But that many women and many more were sharing their stories of abuse, of domestic violence, of emotional abuse, many, many reasons. And even some that just, compatibility wise and it's okay it's okay we we all rush to blame somebody as, as i was talking about we blame we want to blame someone we want to hold someone accountable but that's not getting us anywhere that's just yes it's fueling the fire but what it, what's happening after some weeks the fire dies down everyone has now moved on because there's a new there's a new problem out in the community now or there's a new issue out in the community and that's fine i'm gonna there's Lots of issues happening, but we again are leaving our sisters behind. They are again forgotten. And that's not what our aim is. That's not what our mission is. Our mission is to continue to bring it out in the limelight and continue to remind people that this is not just an event. This is just not just a moment of, of, of tragedy or what have you. It is a continuous issue and a continuous problem until we do something about it. You know, the stigma just doesn't, you know, we, 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 often, we often say that, okay, there's this cultural taboo and there's this societal stigma. But as I mentioned earlier in my, my story, I subconsciously had that stigma upon myself. Although nobody around me was saying it, nobody around showed me that. I somehow had that in my mind because that's just how we were trained. We grow up with certain ideas. My parents didn't train us that way, but that's just what it was because society has an impact on us. What we see has an impact on us. And so when we ourselves, like Ustaz Sai said, that when we label ourselves, we are also part of that problem. We are also contributing to that stigma. Because we are accepting of that label, accepting that that is what is holding us down and that is what's continuing. No, we need to break that within ourselves as well. So really, our mission is to destigmatize this. And it starts with ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he doesn't change the condition of, of the people until they change the condition of themselves. So what does that mean? We start with ourselves and then we move to our families, our mothers, our brothers, our sisters, our you know, our cousins, our nieces, everybody in the family unit. Because Allah made a family unit to be sacred. And that bond is so sacred. You know, you hear blood is thicker than water. It's meant to be thicker than water because we hold such a significance. So when, you, when you, we start to change our family's mindset and we start to encourage our family to do better, think better, be better, who do the family members go out to? Then they then go out and become the community. And that ripple effect 
is what we want to happen in the community, what needs to happen in the community. It no longer can be me, myself, and I. It's no, it's never designed to be me, myself, and I. It's designed to be with every single individual collectively coming together and creating that movement, which Wasila is attempting to do. And as I mentioned, changing that internal definition and that dialogue within ourselves. I know a lot of women feel isolated, tired. You know, recently we, we did a, we did a drop-in session and a lot of the, the, the feelings that were coming up was that they're tired. They're tired, you know? Exhausted, yes very much exhausted to just do this by yourself. And then fearing that the community consistently asks them questions. When are we going to have the prophetic model and understand that your, what their business is is not your business? Stop asking what, why, where, who, and start asking yourself, how can I help? Start being the wasila for them, not not for them to feel even more drained so that they don't come out anymore. Each of us are responsible for that. Our actions is what drives people. Our actions is what brings either people closer to our dean or further away from our dean. Our character is what brings people together and what brings people apart. You know, Osawasai, you mentioned a lot of, you know, there's a lot of ignorance going on. I was just thinking about this, this term. Ignorance is a bliss. How many of you guys have heard this, right? This is just being drilled in all of us. If you want to say ignorance is a bliss, I, you know, I'm, I, I'd rather not know. But will ignorance be a bliss if your actions caused harm to someone's heart? Will ignorance be a bliss if your words caused the heart of a believer that is close to Allah break? And will ignorance be a bliss when you get to the day of judgment and know that that ignorance that you held is the reason why some of your deeds would go? Will ignorance be a bliss then? Absolutely not. Ignorance is a bliss is a misconception in our society that, that halts us from moving forward, halts us from growing. We are not an ummah that needs to stay stagnant. We need to move forward. The idea of progressiveness, you know, the, you know, the term gets used for a different reason, but we ourselves need to continue to progress and elevate ourselves and change these mindsets within ourselves and within everybody else. And so ignorance is not a bliss, my fellow community members. It's not. It's time to, to, to learn. Re-educate yourself. What our dean says, we're not going away from our dean. Our, our, everything that we do is all embedded into our dean. We just have forgotten about it, and we have mixed our cultural and our societal definitions into that. So then comes to my next point of creating a village. We can create it, yes, but it takes strength to continue it. It takes strength to further it. And so my ask for the community members, and even for us as that are divorced or single moms or, or what have you, or married, or whatever label you have yourself as, is to create that village, create that system that will continue to move forward. We cannot create something and leave it. We have to strengthen the foundation of it. And that means that we continue to hold hands with each other and continue that movement together. You know, even if it means that just one person is holding your hand, that's it, that's all it needs to take. It just takes one person to do that. And then that change continues. Um, one of the other mottos of Wasila is that, you know, we take it from Imam al-Ghazali's teacher um, that when he had a school, he went around and asking all of the, all of the students, what do you want to be a, a faqih for? What do you want to be a jurist for? Why are you here learning? And forgive me if the, the story is wrong or this is something that I've heard. And I, um, that everyone wanted it for, you know, for a, a worldly gain. Um, and why they wanted to become an, an imam. And, and the teacher felt that, why am I doing the school? This is, there's nothing but until he came across Imam al-Ghazali as he was a student. And Imam al-Ghazali said, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah. And, and his teacher said, that's it. Just one. All I need to do is have one person. And, and look, at, look at the 
Ihyal and Muddin all came from Imam Al Ghazali. Everyone is, you know, knows them. Just one. So really, that's our motto. Is even if one person, you know, I was just telling this. I was like, even if one or two people showed up today, that's enough, because those two people then go out in the world, and then multiplies and continues and creates. So some of the action items that we, you know, want to request everyone to do is that we we have a lot of programs. We have a lot of things that we have going on, and we want to make it known. As one, we have surveys out that really bring out your opinion because each one of us have a different story my story is different from your story your story is different from her story and her story is different from her story so i i can't sit there and say i know it all i don't i don't know all of it so you have to help me know that you have to help me create these programs that are going to be beneficial i don't want to create them just to create them if it's not going to be beneficial, then, then it's not worth it. So we have surveys out that, that take your information, and all are anonymous. None of your information is going to go out anywhere. We value the idea of trust in Amana. So please take those surveys and, and tell us what your concerns are. Tell us what you need and, you know, and, and show us what it is because that's what we take and that's what we you know, continue with. So. I'm going to have, I'm, you know, in this next slide, I'm going to put up some QR codes, which will be easier for you to access. The other thing is sign up. Sign up to be a Wasila, either for yourself or for others. But be a part of our movement. Be a part of what we are doing because this all requires all of your help. So sign up and whether you, you know, whether you want to be, you know, want to stay connected or whether you want to know other programs or you know, we're constantly creating, constantly doing more. So sign up and get connected with us. So our last part of our name is which Wasila Connection. We want to maintain the connections with all of you. And then there's a program called Gems of Wasila. I haven't officially announced it, but this is my first time that I'm going to announce it. Our, our team, mashallah, beautifully created this. We want to hear your story. Because how will anyone know what is actually happening if we don't create a voice we want to create that platform for everybody to have the opportunity to share their story whatever struggle you went through or maybe whatever helped you what helped you get through that struggle because we're all looking for something we're all looking for some sort of help so maybe perhaps your story will help another individual Maybe you talking about your story will help you. You know, and I'll, and I'll go through some of my own personal, personal things that have helped me throughout my time. But we want to hear you. We want to hear your voice. So please do, um, you know, have the, you know, sign up for that and, and share what your stories are. We want to create that. Um, and lastly, not, I will say this, I'm not here to ask for money, but. An organization can't continue without some sort of funding. So all the viewers that are watching us, I encourage you, really, if, and I, I, I tell this to my team all the time, if I could get 500 people to just do $10 a month, you know how much that can go? <laughs> it can go a long way, just $10 a month. Be a member. Be a member of Wasila and be the reason for an ease for another believer. Allah SWT will help those that help others. You have a front row seat ticket to Allah SWT when you help another person in need. Allah will take care of all of your needs. Just imagine if your $10 a month does exactly that, that brings a breath of ease to somebody. Imagine going on the Day of Judgment and Allah SWT telling you, go to Jannah and you're wondering, oh, what? <laughs> Like I had, I, what, are, you, are you serious? Are you, you know? But yes, because that one action of yours that you thought might have been very small but was so great in the eyes of Allah. So inshallah, I, I, I ask that everybody look, you know, check us out. Um, here are all the QR codes for everything that I've talked about. We have our email that's put up there. Please, please reach out to us. If you have questions, concerns, just want to talk to somebody, come talk to us. That's what we're here for. We're here to, to, to hear you guys. So please, you know, if, and if you know anyone who needs this service or who wants to, 
talk to someone or, or just is going through a difficult time, let them know that we're here. We're here to help. We're here to stay. And we're here to continue this. And lastly, I'm just going to end. Um, I just want to share a couple of things that, you know, a lot of, a lot of women have come up to me and said this, right? We, we're in this era of social media where people are posting pictures showing their amazing life. Mashallah, may Allah protect everybody. I mean, but let's just say it, that's not the reality. Every individual is going through something. Sometimes our heart, we look at another, maybe a couple, or maybe we look at someone else that's having a great time, and you're like, I wish I could just be like that. That's contributing to a lot more of the stress and the depression that a lot of us are going through. So, and Allah, uh, you know, the Prophet said, don't look at someone who's above you, look at someone who's below you, because that's what gives you a little bit more strength, not, not someone that is, that is above you. I just, I just want to share, you may see me as, you know, someone, someone once told me, like, you got it, you, you know, you got this, you're just you're out there, you're doing this, you're, you're, you've made it. I haven't made it until I get to Jannah, guys. Let me just say this. I haven't made it yet. But it's just an appearance. Just like all of you, I have nights where I cry. I have nights where I'm tired. I have days when I am depressed as well. That's kind of weird hearing that from a you know, clinical social worker that's like, what? You, you, you go through depression too? No, all therapists need a therapist. But these are emotions that are natural they're normal they're not no one's immune from these emotions there are days where i just feel helpless sometimes that i myself also feel like when is there an end in sight when is there support months and months can go by it's very debilitating you know and while everyone can see i'm smiling i'm doing this i'm going here i'm talking here yes but I'm not immune from these struggles either. So some things that have helped me, and I just want to share, you know, one of those things that have really, really helped support me throughout my journey is I was, when I was married, I, I came across this, uh, this uh, lecture by uh, Sheikh Musta, I'm not sure what his last name is, but he was speaking at the RIS conference in Toronto years ago, and this was for the youth. I found it very beneficial for me. And he talked about how the Prophet وسلم, the year that he had just lost Khadija radiallahu anha, the year that he's lost his uncle, and then he was at Taif and he was getting pelted with rocks and bloody. He was, he used to last name was bloody. And in some narration they say that he also وسلم, didn't receive wahi for six months. And, but the pain that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam was going through was was heavy and then the ayah comes that we know the condition of your heart allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the prophet and he knows the condition of your heart just let's think about that for a second you and i can share a common story a common emotion but really the 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 depth or the intricacies that you're going through can i actually know that no can you know that about mine no we're individuals and the the individual pain that we go through is very, very unique to us. But Allah is saying that we know that He knows the condition of each of your hearts. <laughs> also knows the condition of this mic if I knock it over. Um, he knows the condition of your heart. Who better than your Creator to know it? Who better? And then He, Allah SWT says, remember me. Why does Allah ask us to remember him? You know, a sheikh of ours was, was, was talking about this, where there was, in Alam al-Ru, the, 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 the world of souls before we came to light here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested himself as best as he saw fit, and we as souls connected to Allah. So Allah is asking us again to our souls, remember that connection, remember me. That's why it says that when you start dhikr, you're remembering Allah. It's the heart is, is sound rested because our heart is our soul. Our soul is rested. So then Allah SWT goes on to say, be like the people of sajda. He could have said, go make wudu, pray, put your hijab on, you know, 
yes, he could have said that, but he just said, be like the people of Caesar, because when we are in such extreme pain, we are just crying inside, screaming inside with this unbearable pain. We just need to drop our head down because our creator is the closest to us than our jugular vein. And there's no veil between you and him when you were in this most broken state. He is the most closest to you at that time. Can you imagine just that you have now the, what's one of those, just the attention of Allah is on you. You don't even have to say anything and Allah knows exactly what you need. Can anyone do that for us? Can anyone really know what is what we need at that moment? So this particular thing has helped me where I've tried and tested. And lastly, I'll just, I don't want to take too much of your time, but there's been two instances that you know I can share that there was a moment where I felt at lo- I was lost. I felt like I had no control over the situation. I just felt like just, I was just tearing apart. And I remember I slipped away in my parents' garage and I was crying. It was in the middle of the night. I learned the art of silently crying. And I just 15 minutes put my head down on the ground and just cried my heart out. And I, all I was able to say was, Allah just hug me. Because that's all that was coming out of my heart. Allah, please love me. Allah, please comfort me. 15 minutes I cried and cried. And then 15 minutes later, my brother comes downstairs in the garage, turns on the light, didn't even know I was there, looks at me, calls my mom and says, go give her a hug. And nobody heard me. Nobody heard me. Allah heard me. Allah hears you. Allah knows what you need. I didn't even know I needed a hug from my mom. <laughs> We're very anti-hug, <laughs> very anti-affectionate. And the fact that she came and gave me a hug, that was just the clear sign that Allah was listening to me. And he provided contentment in my heart at that moment. And the very next day provided a solution. All I had to do was just trust, just let go and believe that Allah is listening to me. And Allah will soothe my heart. Nobody else can. There was another moment where I, someone had said something to me that was very hurtful. I, I took that as, okay, there's a lesson in here. Maybe I need to change up a little bit. I needed to hear this. And I said, oh, Allah, whatever this is, please guide me to it. But at the end of the day, I was still hurt. Because how that was delivered to me was very, very hurtful to me. But I knew I needed to change. So I said, Allah, it's okay. But I didn't know what I needed. I cried all night because I was in pain by myself. I said, Allah, I don't know what I need, but I, I don't know what to do. I know I need to change. I know I need to do this, but I don't know what to do. The very next morning, this individual comes up to me and gives me a hug and says, I am so sorry that I said those things to you. I thought of you all night. And I was over there in the thick of night crying and asking, I don't know what I need. All night. And this individual love put in her, their hearts to think of me that night and to come to me in the morning and say, I'm sorry, here I am for you. Allah not only gave me an apology, from I wasn't even expecting it. I didn't think I didn't even need it, or I felt I didn't need it, and turned that individual as a source of wasila for me. That's the power of Allah. That's the power of of trusting that we have a Creator that loves us seventy times more than our mother. So this is what continues for me. And I wanted to share that gem, that whatever situation you're in, whatever, whatever feeling you're in, sit with it. Talk to Allah. Talk to somebody. Because Allah will provide that wasila for you. He will provide that wasila for you. And inshallah, we can also be that wasila for you. Jazakallah khairan. Um, inshallah, we'll take uh, questions, um, if anybody has questions. Um, I know we have... Quite a few people on live as well. If you have questions, um, you can. Uh, I don't know how to actually check the live. Yeah. <laughs> so the questions um, that are so for those of you who are on Instagram. Uh, we have live um, Instagram. We also have YouTube. YouTube, I don't have access to. I have no idea if you guys watching on YouTube have questions. If you do, 
join our live on Instagram because we can actually <laughs> see the stream. Oh, so yeah. I think uh, Brother Manir will monitor oh, okay. there. So we have someone that's monitoring the questions. Um, inshallah, please submit your questions. We're not going to, obviously not going to share your names. Um, and we'll try to answer them as best as possible. And of course, we want to allow those that are here to also ask questions. Um, and, um, so I'm just going to rephrase the question for everybody. Um, so just essentially, I think what uh, was, uh, you were asking was that although, you know, there's, I, I had the family, I had the support, there's many people that do not have that. And I recognize that. And I understand that. How can we at Wasila recreate that for the sisters or the brothers to come together and have that and, and meet the needs that are still yeah yes how to how to recreate the family structure and unit um so i'll just i'll just share a couple of things right i've been divorced for four years i am i am still divorced i'm, I'm not remarried um i think that's the next challenge right and that that actually not next challenge but that is that is a very serious challenge or that is a very it's a big issue because in the community what we're seeing is this the stigma continues that brothers are not you know, considering women that are, that have been previously divorced. There are some brothers that are not even looking at the women who have children who are single moms. There's also the family unit where the stigma continues, where the mothers of the sons are also not okay with that. There is the families that are not okay with that. And then we have the issue of, do we have men out there that are men that are going to take, <laughs> I'm just, you know, that are going to that are going to stand up and and take the stance i'm just going to share a couple of thoughts on it number one I, that's what that's what we're doing we're changing the mindset we're trying to change the mindset of every individual to stop looking at our sisters that are single mothers that are divorced as something that is a bad thing to stop to stop feeling like you're less than the one that hasn't been married before and it's it's a hard it's <laughs> it, it is it is hard it is hard I'll, I'll share a story uh you know i'll share the story as i on my platform i tend to share these stories a bit of my own journey and struggle with that is that you know we also have mothers who there, there was a there was a brother who i considered and the mo his own mother was a single mom who got remarried. She had two children, but she was not accepting of me because I had two more children than she did. So that stigma and that hypocrisy exists not only in the men, but also in the mothers and the women. So that's why we, we tackle both ends of it. We tackle the woman as well, and we tackle the men as well. We, we recently just had an event yesterday. Yeah, so we are starting so that is that is one of our goals is to start this trajectory of teaching our men or or inviting our men to have these real raw conversations of what does it mean to be a man the way the prophet ﷺ was and the way he saw Salam taught us as we know everyone likes to everybody likes to to say oh the prophet ﷺ, you know married khadija everyone talks about how the prophet ﷺ had multiple wives you know there's Yes, that's. Yes, which 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 is which is a, which is a problem as well, but what I think at the end of it, right? As we continue to change the 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 definitions in everybody's minds, inshallah, that we continue to talk about and continue to inject in our communities and our families on how to actually think about these things and how to actually bring those lessons into our lives and implementing those lessons into our lives um, I will say that there are men out there that do marry divorced women that do marry single mothers that I have come across many of them as well that there are brothers who have stood against not against but stood their feet down and said this is my decision and that I will that I will marry this yes <laughs> yes 
Yes. Yeah, so, so in that in that regard, Wasila is going to continue to to have these programs to continue talking about these things, co-parenting, you know, blended families, how to navigate those challenges because those challenges are there with blended families as well. You're now you're now divide you're now bringing together two two families with children, and it's becoming you know a bigger family unit. How to navigate those challenges? So, inshallah, in the future, we are we are actively working on things where we can provide that support to both individuals to really, you know, work on that. Um, but I think, Sister Asai, yeah, I think you might have some. Yeah, no, Jazakallah khair, and it's such a good question because I think you know, as Mashallah Asana has already elucidated, the the aim of this organization is a very multifactorial. Like, there's a lot of different you know aspects to what she you know the vision is for this organization. But I think the biggest thing that we can do now, the starting point, is the unlearning, right? Which is what the destigmatization is. It's unlearning. We have to teach our, our communities, from our men to our women, our leadership. Every aspect of our community just needs to unlearn whatever conditioning they've been conditioned to think about this word divorce and relearn the prophetic way. And until we do that, we're going to keep you know hitting these barriers so i think that's why these types of conversations are so important honest conversations about openly sharing openly talking about divorce there's no shame there's no stigma i don't walk with your head high what do you have to walk into a room and, and feel as though oh someone's judging me don't let them judge you you know show that you have is because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you with that and he's the one that you are you know upheld by you don't need to look and and uh to other people's you know uh, opinions of you and then determine your self-worth from that so it's on us as women to hold our heads a certain way and walk with that honor and it's also on organizations like wasila and other uh, teachers or, or people in the community who can start to reframe these conversations so we call on the leadership we call on the brothers and the sisters who are in these positions to start to talk about the, this topic of of uh, marriage and divorce and especially I think we need to start talking about them together because sometimes the conversations are separated right so there's a lot of um, conversations around premarital right preparation around marriage family and then as an afterthought maybe once in a blue moon you see something that has to do with divorce and I think that's a real uh, that's just it's wrong it's all part of uh, uh, you know the experience of life and just like when you study fiqh, for example, you have to study, you know, the fiqh of these things, right? Why can't we bring this more mature, um, educated, com you know, a lens or, or approach to these topics instead of fearing them or thinking like, oh, if we talk about them, we're endorsing them. That's just insane to me, right? No, if we're talking and teaching, for example, young couples about divorce, the fiqh of divorce, how the Quran calls on men to marry and divorce and the way that it should be done it doesn't mean we're pushing people to divorce <laughs> but this is sometimes the you know the uh, the ignorant way that people um even receive that so the idea here is that no we have to just talk about relationships what healthy relationships are what unhealthy relationships are so that we can learn to recognize right and teach our young men and women to recognize patterns to avoid patterns, to fear God. I mean, these are the kinds of conversations we have to be having. So I think a lot of what you're asking is very valid. Um, and inshallah, we're working towards that goal. But for those of you who are, you know, who may not know, if you are looking for opportunities to meet uh, other people, right? Because sometimes, you know, you may be in that place, right? There's, everybody's journey is different. So if you're in a place where like, okay, I'm ready to meet someone for the sake of marriage and maybe talk for the next chapter of my life, there will be an or um, an event here, I think, in August, two weeks, right? Yeah, August thirteenth. Yeah, August thirteenth with Half Our Dean. It's I think it still should be open in terms of registration, but you know we got to sometimes take those leaps of faith and make ourselves vulnerable. You know, like I said, you have to come out and own, uh, you know, who you are, and put yourself into those situations where you could find, you know, those opportunities. And tawakkal on Allah. At the end of the day, tawakkal on Allah. So there are those efforts happening. And inshallah, you know, we'll see yeah. is working towards that. Inshallah, yeah. No, um, you know, it's 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 a, it's a work in progress and slowly, step by step. So jazakallah khairan for your question. I appreciate it. Yeah, we are we are definitely working on. We're revamping our website, inshallah, um, and so we'll have it a little bit more accessible as we continue. Um, but you brought up a really good point where, and I just wanted to highlight that 
each one of us holds a specific trait. We have a specific expertise within us. And that's what we need. We need people to come forward and, and do what you're best at. Do what you're good at. Do what you love. And here at Wasila, we do create those platforms for that. You know, I, I, I get people asking me that, can I do this? Can I do that? And I want to be that organization that allow, you know, gives that space. So, you know, inshallah, please do connect with us. I think, uh, I think we'll, we'll definitely have some space for that too. But that's, that's, that's what it, that's what it takes, right? That's what it takes to create a village. You come, exactly. You connect, you connect with like-minded individuals. You have a passion and here's a platform to continue that passion. So inshallah, please definitely do, do connect with me. Yeah. So there's, I, I hear a couple of different questions. One I hear, is there any legal help or legal support on how to navigate the legal um, needs of what's your, what's your rights and what you, you know, what's there? The second question I think I hear is that how, to, how to navigate, you know, informing the kids and how to work through that. Um, yeah. Step by step. Um, so to, uh, let me answer the last one. We do have co-parenting um, series, which which although it says co-parenting, we have multiple people just come normally not not the co-parent, you know, we like both the parents to come so both parents can hear the information and we go through that. We talk about how to navigate some of those things. How do we talk to children in different age levels? Um, you know, what what you can say. Yeah, so, so that we don't have yet as we, we need trained professional. I think one of the things that I, um, that I am very staunch on is that I don't want any, just anyone coming and talking about that. I want the trained professionals that are knowledgeable in that. I'm in the ABA field, um, so I understand. Yeah, so I understand what you're saying. We have a BCBA on, you know, there that can actually provide that support. So we do have that service um, for the BCBA. So you can definitely check us out on the website. We have a link for that. Yes, it's on our, it's, uh, there's, a, there's a portion on our website that says mental health, um, and in that, there's our clinical therapy, there's a parent consultation, um, and there's also um, therapy, uh, a religious consultation on there. So if you can't click on the link, um, I have the email up. It's admin at wasilaconnect.org. Please email us if you want a session for that. We can definitely um, book you in for that session. Um, now, going back to the legal um, yeah, we're smiling because we've, we've had this conversation over years, and I know how difficult it is to navigate the legal system here. It's, it's very difficult, um, and thousands and thousands of dollars do go. I do want to share one resource we just, we just got, mashallah. We haven't launched it yet, but I'm going to share it with you guys, is that we now have a, um, a resource uh, specifically for um, our Muslims, where you can navigate doing the form. So if you were going through a divorce or you have a certain form that you need to fill out in the court system um, and you, you know, cannot, you, know, you, you don't have the, the resources to go to a lawyer, we now have the system called um, Legal FINA. Um, it was, yeah, so I, if you email us, we can share the resource with you. It's specifically, um, you know, it's, it's to help support, um, you know, individuals um, who want to navigate that system, kind of like a, um, kind of like a, yeah, like a, like a, uh, what's the word, robo, like an automated system that kind of guides you each step of the way to help support you in like what, what aspect it is. And there's customer service on there to help, help you navigate some of those uh legal terminology and and what have you so that is there so if you need that or if you know someone who would like to check that it is still a work in progress um it's uh, it's created by um a family a, a brother who who really you know wanted to provide the community with that service so mashallah you know they had been working on it for years and they finally just launched it and there's still a work in progress but please email us if you'd like to have that um and we can we can talk more about that um as far as lawyers go you know it is, it, it, it is difficult to find. And it, family law just in itself is very, very, like, it, there's, there's no, like, I don't, you know, it sounds, it sounds kind of depressing to say, but there's no end to sometimes these family law cases, right? So you don't know how long a particular case is going to go. You don't know how short it's going to go. You don't know how long. Maybe there's different complications that do come up. So it's really hard because a lot of these lawyers are very much like just slammed with, with these cases. I mean, we have top-notch lawyers that are amazing, but they can't take anyone on because there's a lot of these cases. And so we are 
attempting to work on finding resources for lawyers. We unfortunately cannot at this time do not have a list of that, but we go beyond just Muslim lawyers. I think, you know, Osal Hussai and I were talking about this, that we don't need to specifically look for a Muslim lawyer. You, Yeah, so so there are a lot of other lawyers out there. Um, so we are, you know, we are still working on that resource to just have, and I know Osal Hussai has, you know, maybe might have some research too. We're all sort of coming together and trying to create those resources. And inshallah, once we have them, we will definitely put them out on our network. Um, but if you individually, you know, have a specific question about that, you can definitely reach out to us. And um, as a social worker, my job in itself is to find resources. Um, so whatever I have, whatever knowledge I have, I can um, I can share that information with you too. Um, so, sorry, I know I didn't answer your question. So, so inter interpretation. I, I see, yeah. So challenges on on understanding how to navigate that process. It is it is very difficult. I you know I, I will agree with that. I myself went through that process. Um, it's hard to understand the le you know the legalities and yes, um, we did have we actually had a workshop that um, we had it about a about maybe about a year and a half ago um, to just kind of talk about some of those terms. I will see what will you know, we'll, inshallah, we'll take that feedback. Yeah, we'll take that feedback and, you know, inshallah, we'll, we'll reconsider, trying, you know, talk about it. The, the sticky situation is that everybody's situation is different. And, you know, there isn't just a one answer to solve everyone's or a general generic thing that we, that lawyers can share. But um, I know there are some lawyers that provide free consultations. Um, and those consultations are, are helpful. Um, so, inshallah, if any of you or if you know people who, who want some of those resources, inshallah, we can try to try to help support that. Um, but yeah, yeah, and that's what that's what we seek to 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 solve, right? It's guidance, guidance on what to do, where to go, resources. We actually have something in the works. I mean, it's it's there. We haven't completely launched it, but it, um, but I'll just share it. We have an intake form that um, that you can fill out and request that you have certain needs and you're looking for certain services um, and that's what the surveys are for actually to to gather the information of how many people are in need of a specific service like for example legal help financial help uh, job skills training uh, housing resource so that's what we're right now we're in that stage of collecting that information so that we can actively make those skill set and the, that 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 specific uh, resource for it yeah, so we, we, you know, we are, the surveys right now, that's what we're, that's the phase that we're in right now, is that we're taking that data right now. And then, inshallah, we actually, you know, subhanAllah, we actually talked about this, me and Ustad al talked about how each of us are in a different phase of life, even with the divorce. You know, some of us need emotional support. Some of us need hands-on job training. Some of us need educational grants. Some of us need, you know, legal help, financial help. So there's different different areas that we can touch. And that's what we are currently creating, inshallah, um, where we can provide that support and service. For so we do, have, we do have that form, inshallah. We will post that up. Um, if you, you know, if you connect with us and be on our, our newsletter, we do send out um, some of those uh, informations, and so inshallah, please keep a lookout. Soon we'll have that have that up. But for the mean, in the meantime, if everyone is looking for some some sort of help, please email us at admin at wasilaconnect.org, um, and you know ask us, and that you know that way we can individually uh, see what your needs are. Um, and we have, mashallah, very, a lot of organizations that have, have those resources, too. So, you know, we, we're, we're looking to not reinvent the wheel, but also, you know, collaborate with these other organizations to um, provide the support. So I have in the past, um, you know, someone has come to me for a housing issue or, or a rent issue. I, I will connect them with another organization. And MCC, mashallah, is a, a beautiful organization that really helps support, um, support these matters, too. So... I can definitely um, connect you with, with some of those resources too and where to look for them too. Yeah, Jazakallah, and the question was, what are the resources and support for our youth um, and our, our younger, our, our children um, as a single parent? Um, 
so this is something that you know we we definitely recognize that you know me having my four as well I, I, I constantly think about what what can I provide for my own children um, so we are you know working on that's where our community aspect comes in where we do community programs where we do socials um, you know we will have more programs and, and events and um, activities really to, to connect our youth back into our community um, and that's really you know a lot of the massages and a lot of the uh, organizations are actively working on this as well where they're you know looking we're creating programs for the youth to join that way they are they're you know finding you know some some sort of support because us adults, we can sit through this lecture. We can, or we can sit through a support group and a talk therapy. We can sit through all this, but our kids cannot. And that's not something our kids want, right? So we have to think on their levels where, what does a 14-year-old like to do, you know? For guys, maybe, you know, play basketball, you know, go to the beach, go to the movies, wh whatever is your child's like, we're trying to create those type of programs um, and those community programs. Um, so that is something that we are actively working on. Please stay tuned. There is going to be something happening um, soon with that. Um, so, uh, but we do hear you um, in terms of like what other support systems are there. You know, I, there's a great organization. They do a lot of youth events too. It's called Al Misba. I know they're pretty far there in Sacramento, but they do a lot of programs for youth as well. MCC actually had um, quite a lot of youth programs as well. I know because of COVID, a lot of those things have stopped, but I know they are re-emerging with, with those. So please connect with this uh, massage as well. Get on their mailing list um, and see what other programs they have for you. There's a lot. There, I know there's a new um, community called the Centerville Islamic Center in Fremont that they also are providing. They do, they do soccer camps. They do basketball camps. They do, um, you know, I think uh, there's another, there's, uh, I just recently came across a flyer um, in the Fremont area where there's a wrestling club. So there's, there's a lot of, a lot of programs coming up now for the youth, but it's, it, part of the issue is that getting that word out there um, and seeing that. So, you know, if you, if you have questions about that or ideas about that, please email us. You know, we're, we, we, we are connected in different communities that we can give you that resource and send you these flyers and send you these, um, this information of that. So, you know, there's like, I think there's an arts and craft for girls um, coming up or there's like a, you know, a kickboxing. I know there's like a kickboxing class. So there are lots of programs out there. But inshallah, with Wasila specifically, we are actively looking at that. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot, of, a lot of ways to do, but we are actively considering that. And inshallah, in the future, um, we should be able to provide more programming for that. Um, no, Jazakal to, Khairan, to all of you, I just wanted to reiterate, I think, mashallah, from having heard directly from Sen over the course of many conversations, the vision that she and her team have. There are so many, all of these concerns about you know, legal, as we mentioned, aid, financial aid, um, you know, providing resources for child care, especially for single families. All of these things are on her radar. It's, it's all there. It's just a matter of getting the support from the community and obviously um, hearing from you. So that's why I wanted to just really do another push about the importance of these surveys and the data that she's collecting. Because when we, when she can analyze that, you know, the majority of the, uh, you know, submissions were, highlighting this particular area or maybe a percentage was then she can know how to you know, distribute those resources how to allocate funds how to do grant you know because she's also looking at grants so mashallah they're they're really actively trying to meet the needs of you, your needs but we need to hear from you and we also need to have more and more sisters join so if you know sisters who couldn't make it today please encourage them to you know, follow these, uh, all, take all, all these QR codes, share it with them, and let them know that data is really going to, you know, make the difference here. The more information she, she can get, the more she can hear from what your specific needs and wants are, the more her and her team can really assess, come together, you know, and assess, you know, how to do that. But if we don't know, and then we're just kind of trying to, you know, put things together based on our observations, it may not, you know, it may take much longer, right? So you'll actually help the process. You'll facilitate the process tremendously if you participate, get involved, start joining, get the word out, follow the socials. Make sure, I, I'm so like right now in this mindset of this organization has to be at the 
pop like if you did a search for like divorce in Islam, you know, or you know, the wasila would come up come up at the top of those search results, right? That it's that recognized as a national, you know, community, I mean, organization leading the conversation on divorce and and how to help people navigate all of the different aspects of it. But in order to get there, we need more and more people involved in it. So it's really important to do that. So yeah, I I'll say this. A lot of the things that you guys have asked, we've been having these conversations for three years. You know, subhanAllah, three years that we've been continuing having. And some of these things that you guys have asked, it's already created. And I I have them backlogged. I have them tabled because I need I, I need support. You know, I haven't I haven't said this openly and I'm saying this today. You know, my team also tells me they're like, you can't just you can't just stay quiet. You gotta go out there. You got to talk to people. You have to, you have to present this stuff. My motto with Wasila was, I'm not going to go out there and ask first. I'm going to do the work first. I want to show everybody that we're doing the work. And we're in year two, two and a half years. And this is all the work we've done and much more. And there's so many things that, you know, my, I, I have that I unfortunately cannot launch yet because I don't have the manpower for it, nor do I have the funding for it. And, and as I'll, you know, as idealistic, I'd like it to be in a perfect world that I have all the funding, all the manpower to, to do this. I don't. So it's going to take every individual out there in the community to really support us. And I think we are now at that prime where we realize that this is, this is just on, going on and up and up. And, you know, I used to not have so much love for research but i see why research is really important and our team has mashallah you know we have a wonderful social media team we have a wonderful you know we have a lot of in, we have some interns as well so if you have people that would love to volunteer with us please you know connect with us on that um if you have expertise in a certain area bring them forward because that's what we need because together we can do much more bigger changes can't do it by myself so. I just uh, for the viewers who are listening our one of our dear sisters here made a really beautiful profound point that I just wanted to if I, I won't do it as justice as you did but mashallah paraphrase it is that you know many of us in our own struggle sometimes we forget the fact that when we turn our focus to khidma to service to serving you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala serving his his uh, creation that we actually will lighten our own burdens as opposed to just becoming insular, focusing on ourselves, which is what Shaitan usually, that's one of his tactics, right? Isolate, make you completely wallow in your own self. You know, as they say, misery loves company. So he'll just be right there, you know, to drown you in your sorrows and uh, have you stuck either in the past, right? Which is what oftentimes people will say is, is what depression is, right? You're stuck in a past or anxious about the future and you forget the now, right? But we're called to be people of tawakkal on Allah. We don't despair, right? Despair is haram in Islam. We have hope. We don't let d thoughts of darkness and hopelessness ever overcome us because Allah is hope. So, and then we see that there's also this law of reciprocity, right? When as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you are grateful for the abundance of blessings, I will incre increase you. And how do we show that gratitude, right? By using the blessings that he's given us, the faculties that he's given us, the skills that he's given us for good, right? Paying it forward. That is actual gratitude. Gratitude isn't just saying alhamdulillah. Everybody can say that on their tongue, right? It's actual action. It's an actionable thing. So when you, as Mashallah, your sister said, you know, all of us have, should have a stake in supporting this organization because to be honest, and for those who are watching too, if you're married, if you're a brother, if you are, you know, feeling like this is maybe uh, you, you're tur you tuned in, I don't know, by choice or accidentally, but you're thinking, well, this only applies to sisters who are divorced. That thinking we want you to not do. This is not about you know, this is the community. This is a, this is a, a, a everybody in the community has to have, um, participate in supporting this organization, right? It's not just only a certain group, right? Because as Sana has mentioned, um, there's a ripple effect. If we want our community to be whole, right, then we have to 
come together and provide that, those services, come together as a community, support one another, and, and be whole together, not everybody go into their little, you know, groups and, and forget about each other. And this is the danger of the modern world, right? Everybody's just stuck in their own labels and identity politics. And, you know, it doesn't apply to me. I'm not interested. This is not our deen. The, our deen is, as the hadith says, we're an ummah, we're like one body. If one part of the body hurts, the entire body hurts. So when you see as I'm, we mentioned, a specific group being underserved for far too long, neglected for far too long, oppressed for far too long. That is why we all have to step up and undo the harm that has been caused. And that requires um, everybody, every individual to participate. So I'm sorry, you had a question. Yes. Ignorance. Yes, ignorance. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I that that is that is a real that is a real issue where we have had multiple women and, and, and men too have said that their friends drop them overnight and they no longer include them. So really we have to look at ourselves and, and those that are married out there, those that are um, you know, that maybe aren't married or single, you know, I've never been married, like don't don't turn away. I mean, it, there's no such thing as you know, your friend is divorced, that what's the, you know, that the juju will come on you, you know, or that, 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 uh, <laughs> that, that sahba or something is going to come on you. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I just want to reiterate to everyone that's watching one of the, one of the feelings that, you know, you as friends, when you turn away from your divorced friends, you make them feel like they're not worth it. You, you, you know, as, as I was saying, it's a betrayal. It is, it's, it's like, what were you friends for in the beginning? You know, what was your, where was your heart? Where was your intention? You know, and we, we, we are to be together in, you know, t t together and work together and, you know, and continue to help one another. But your just little action of slowly moving away from them because they no longer share a status is very, very harmful, it's ignorant, and it is not from the deen. It is absolutely not from the deen. You know, I look at each individual, one of you women, and you might have seen me walk around, and would you have guessed anything? No, you, you would look at me as a person. So really, I think, you know, those that are married, that those that are in the community, think about your actions. Think about what you're doing that is causing and contributing to the entire stigma of this and contributing to the feelings that of hurt in another believer's heart. I think they, they just honestly reveal their own ignorance, unfortunately. And like you said, for people like that, good riddance, if they, you know, don't understand the very basics of, of decency and, and, you know, showing kindness and compassion, then, you know, you don't need to, uh, you know, waste your time on that. And Allah sometimes removes people from you for that reason. Yeah. And this is what we were speaking about is the unlearning. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's very painful. It's very painful. But alhamdulillah for, you know, creating new, newer, better networks. And that's what this is about. You know, we don't need to. We can just close the door on all that negativity and move Keep moving forward. forward. You know, some, you know, you know, as a final thought, I'll share that, you know, as Ustad Husai was saying, that there, Allah SWT will reveal who is beneficial for you, who is not good for you. You know, as I spoke about in the beginning where I had all these attachments, these attachments to certain people, and I didn't want to let go of those attachments. And I had people telling me, let them go, let them go. They're not worth it. I just couldn't let them go. But Allah will show you the true colors of each individual in your life. Because sometimes we either learn by advice or we learn by falling. So really sometimes a lot of us, you know, I, I learn by, by painful situations of how these people that I was so attached to, that I respected, that I loved, all slowly turned away from me. And I said, at, today I say good riddance. Because Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still watching out for me. And not only that, when Allah SWT takes something away from you, He will replace it with something even much better. So if He is taking people away from you, Alhamdulillah, 
you will have someone in just much better than they were better better people than they were and you'll you won't even think about them anymore they won't even occupy that space in your mind that they doesn't deserve to be occupied in and and that's what we have to look forward to that oh Allah, you've taken this person away alhamdulillah replace it with something so much more better Yes, <laughs> don't let them live rent free. Yes, yes, we, we allow a lot of things to live rent free in our mind. So, alhamdulillah, um, I think we, you know, we are at 3.30. I, you know, what we're going to do, inshallah, is just wrap up, uh, wrap up our online live feed. Alhamdulillah, there's, there's snacks, there's shy and everything. We want to appreciate everyone who is, who has logged on, has watched any of our, any of our portions there. Please, if you have questions, concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have our socials if you haven't gotten it please you know uh, look look us up um we're out there um email us um so some of the services we have uh really quickly is that i have a monthly support group for divorced women and single moms they happen the first saturday of every month um and uh we if you get on our website we'll be able to give you um not website if you email us we'll be able to give you a link uh that link if anyone who has watched us has ever had our previous link, that has changed. So please do email us if you don't have our new link. Um, so we have monthly. Um, we are consistently having programs every month. Um, so I'll just give you a highlight uh, really quickly. This uh, tomorrow's August. Uh, SubhanAllah, time is flying. We, we, have, we have a co-parenting workshop coming up. Uh, inshallah august 21st please do you know please do register once that comes out um we will also you know for the brothers that are watching we're also going to have another uh manly man series uh inshallah coming up so please do keep uh keep in tune for that um we have uh we have we have a couple other workshops and, and program. We also have an Eid gift program that we did right now it's, it's closed we've we are not we're serving this Eid we are serving 50, I believe 52 children and 25 adults. So, um, you know, if you, you know, those that are watching, we are still, we are still in need of about 600 to, to cover up the cost for that. If you'd like to donate, please do donate on that. But we are making gift baskets for our uh, divorced or separated and our widows and their children. So we've, I just got all those boxes in my home. So I'm excited. I'm going to be, we're going to be making those baskets. So this is going to be an annual thing because Eid is such a, less time and we want to be able to provide some some sort of love you know from some physical form of love and giving gift um so that is that is there as well each ramadan we have iftars um and uh um and i and we will have in-person socials coming up more and i will start uh i will start releasing some of those things so those are some of our current programs happening um please again uh, reach out to us and give us more feedback on what you'd like to see more of. Um, so jazakallah khairan for everyone that's been watching us. Um, appreciate it. Uh, please keep us in your du'as. Um, if you want to close with the du'a. Jazakallah khairan again, everyone. Uh, for the honor of, of being in your company, hearing your beautiful stories, opening your heart to us. I hope, inshallah, this is the first of many more events with all of you and more, inshallah, as we continue to grow. Uh, with that said, inshallah, we'll end in du'a. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa la'asr inna al-insan la fi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik ala sayyidina wa maulana wa habibna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima kathira. Subhana rabbika rabbil azzati amma yusifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil